We've been talking to Shelby Rogers, a respiratory specialist at the hospital, and learning all sorts of things about our lungs, basically, today, everything pulmonary, and your role at the hospital. We talked, too, about the environment. Let's go over those once again. What are some contributing factors? to someone having difficulty breathing. We talked about cigarette smoking, of course, is probably in the number one. Um, Right. If you have, you'd be diagnosed then with COPD. What are some others? I would say heavy dust environments, um, heavy chemical fume environments that you work in. Mm -hmm. Uh, For people that work in factories, I would say um, if you work in fiberglass or um, asbestos, which is not around much Ooh, anymore. Yeah, but fiberglass or, is? It's, it's in the air. Those yeah. fine particles, if you inhale those into your lungs, it sits there and it builds tissue around it, which makes the lungs stiffer, makes it harder to breathe. So I recommend anybody that works in those type of environments to wear a respirator. Resp- actually, a respirator, not a mat, just a... Well, a like regular a, mask? Not a regular mask, but one that will prevent you from having anything come around the okay. sides as well. Okay. Yeah, that just really clamps on there and yes. keeps it all out. Keep it all out yeah. for you. Wow. For children, uh, exercise-induced asthma is a problem at schools and things like that. They need to take their inhalers to the nurse's station so they'll have it at school as well because mm-hmm. asthma can be aggravated by they're heavy running and playing. Sure. And, and you mentioned, too, during the break we were talking about you can actually outgrow asthma. For kinda. some people, <laughs> it's not really outgrowing it, but if you've had a history when you were a child, you kind of adjust to it and mm-hmm. your body adjusts to it, but, and it kind of settles down for many years, and then people will not see any trouble from it until later in life. This getting old stuff is just not... <laughs> it's for the birds. <laughs> it's for the birds. It's like, oh boy, another thing waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. It's like waiting for the other shoe to fall part of the time, you know. But, right. Um, and then we were also going to talk about, uh, um, you wanted to bring up about medications. Yes, medications. If you're prescribed new medications or you've been on them for any time at all. This is for asthma. <laughs> For or, asthma, or COPD, any type any, of lung. Any type of lung, okay. Thing. Do request that they educate you well on what the medications are for mm-hmm. and even maybe give you something in writing for you to review later because like Advair and Simbacort, Flovents, they're a maintenance those are type inha- med- Those are inhalers. Inhalers. Okay. They are maintenance type medicines. They're not going to rescue you. You have to use those on a regular basis, okay. on your daily basis. To see them, so they're build. not okay. They're not a rescuer, then. Right. Okay. They are there to help maintain pain. your airways the okay. way they are. Okay. Keep them open. Right. Okay. To keep them open, and they have to build up in the system for at least I give it thirty days, thirty to really? sixty days. Yes. Oh wow. And a lot of people tr- kind of give up on it, and they don't realize that it's helping them, but it is mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. And then if you have a rescue inhaler, your combi vents. Um, Pro Air, Albuterol, all basically the same drug. Mm-hmm. That's your rescue type inhaler. Okay. It goes into the lungs. It opens you up right away. That's if you have some sort of an asthma attack or a asthma attack, COPD. Anything that's reversible in there that's still got tissue that's able to be dilated back okay. from the inflammation. Okay, so you've got to make sure you've got your, especially with kids, as you were saying, when they're at school and they're exercising, they have to have their inhaler at the right. nurse's office. At the nurse's office. Yeah so that they can have that in case they have an attack. And I'm sure that's a portion of what you spend your time with is educating people on how to use everything. Um, Correct. Making sure that um, just as you're doing today with our TV and and there might be other opportunities um, within the community to to let people know about this as well. Right. There is a uh, Better Breathers program. Okay. That they can get information. They can call our department at uh, 508-1569 and ask about the Better Breathers program. Okay, 508-1569. 1569, the Better Breathers program. It's a community program that is done by one of our respiratory therapists here in town. Um, I should have brought that card with me. Well, you know what? I can tell people exactly where they can find that because we send that in to the Baxter Bulletin. It's on the calendar. Awesome. And uh, it's also in um, the viewpoint. When that comes out on a quarterly basis, we always list the Better Breathers 
oh, uh, that's wonderful. support group. So uh, wonderful. We always try to make sure, and it's also we'll make sure that that information. Uh, we're going live um, on the seventeenth of January with a new internet site. So we want to be sure and send oh, folks to baxterregional.org and take a look there. We'll have an event calendar and it will have all of the, the various community wonderful. support groups that, that uh, That's wonderful. we have throughout the community. So we'll make sure everybody gets the word on that as well. We also have, it, which it has to be ordered by your physician if you're newly diagnosed with COPD mm -hmm. or any type of breathing problems, we have a, your physician can order for you pulmonary rehab and we have respiratory therapists that are trained to educate you how to live a little bit differently with your disease process and your breathing difficulties to make life better for you to improve your quality of care. Can you give me some examples of that? I'd be real interested to know what it is that um, you would be trained in to do differently. They're going to work with you on exercising Okay. And your diet, they have a dietitian that comes and speaks to you. If you are have COPD, mm -hmm. it's difficult. You don't want to eat large meals. They teach you how to eat smaller meals really? in portions. Okay. Because that large meal fills you up and it pushes your stomach pushes up on your diaphragm and that makes it harder for you to breathe. Never thought of that. I was just thinking of Thanksgiving <laughs> after a Thanksgiving dinner, it makes complete sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they also work with you to uh, it's different stages. They start off by mainly educating you what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, they work you up in your exercising program to encourage you to continue exercising, even though you may be having some difficulties on how to build yourself up to make your life a little better. So, a, so a different exercises, but not maybe as strenuous exercises? Not as strenuous. They'll start at, uh, depending on what degree your disease process is at, mm -hmm. they'll work with you with that. They also teach you about your medications, proper use and techniques on, on Which that. Which is, like you just pointed out, is very so important. So important. Um, I didn't realize there was a difference between medication that you took to maintain as I think most of us probably from Hollywood always think of someone with asthma as represented as that rescue inhaler. That rescue inhaler. They've got to have that or you know. Um, yeah they're not going to make it make without it. Yeah, it yeah. Without, <laughs> yeah and yet there's oh so much more to it. There is there is. I teach you how to stay away from triggers and things like that as well. Okay. About oh okay what would trigger? Um, um, let see if you can give me an example on like humid days, um, you want to stay in air mm -hmm. on hu humid days. If um, perfumes, oh um, boy, that's a trigger for me. Usually, it ends up though not so much the breathing as a massive headache um, with somebody wearing a real scents, perfume. Yes. It's not a not the colognes, not the other things, but the real expensive stuff is like whoa. Yes, yeah. it can it can set some people into yeah. uh, respiratory problems and wow. how to avoid those things and cleaners and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Karen and Julie are very de detailed about that. The, and those are our physical therapists that respiratory are there. Therapists. Respiratory therapists. Respiratory yes. therapists, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, huge distinction there. Yeah. But what else can you tell us about or, or some recommendations that you can make to folks um, as far as those that may think they, their best bet is if they are having any kind of breathing issues, contact their primary care physician, get yes. a checkup, and and be sure and let them know that your lungs have been giving you some challenges or yes, problems. Yes, I recommend they make a list uh -huh. of what's, when these events are happening. Okay. And that way they can take their questions in, because they may not be having that event while they're there at the doctor's office, mm -hmm. but if they keep a written list of, say, this happened when I did this, or you know, I felt this shortness of breath, and it took this to help me feel a little better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm real interested in, you keep talking about, you've talked several times about humidity. Yes. Um, that that can be a trigger, or that can be a challenge for folks. Is dry heat like a desert, to live in a desert area? Is that why a lot of people with breathing uh, Some issues? people go there because it's a different type of humidity. Yeah. It, um... Where we got the heavy moist, it's a real heavy. We sure do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Humidity. It makes a, those that are having trouble breathing in the first place to exchange 
the air like okay. they need to. Mm -hmm. That drier type humidity is a little bit e easier for them to breathe, to breathe. in. Yeah. And yet I know when it's um, uh, really clear and cold, uh, it seems to be when the lungs seem to work the best when it's dry, when it's a dry well, cold. It's drier and it's, yeah. it's cool, they breathe much easier. Much easier, yeah. So that would be like even in their homes, they would probably want to keep it at a cooler temperature mm -hmm. rather than to keep it really, really warm. If you See, have my mother problems. was right. She always put a sweater on. <laughs> we kept the house cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shelby, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. And would you please share again the Better Breathers uh, phone number? how someone can contact. It's 508-1569. Uh, 1569, 508-1569 to find out more about the Better Breathers group that meets. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank Will you, you come and join me. us again? Of course. All right, we'd love to hear some more stories and, and find out what's going on at the hospital. So come back and see us again. All right, thank All right. you. Thanks for joining us today for BRMC's Healthy Connections with your host Donna McMullen. It's been a pleasure. We look forward to talking to you again next week.